You want to know how you repair a power steering leak on a Nissan? You fucking don't. Okay, so I'm about to replace the idler pulley in this thing. First, I gotta take out this motor mount. It's part of that motor mount. And then jack up the motor and hopefully get to the pulley. It's right there. Yeah, a couple months back, I just battled the hell out of these power steering lines by replacing each fitting with an actual hose clamp. What it used to look like is this. But yeah, there's 12 of them all together and they're in impossible to get to places because the power steering line goes from metal to rubber, then back to metal again. It goes down here. There's even leaking down here too for the little cooling line thing. All those hose clamps. All those hose clamps and you still can't get attached to me. Now if you've been watching my channel for a long time you'll know that I've always had this car and I mean always I've had this car since I was 16 now I'm 28 and now I'm a mechanic now basically because of it keeping this goddamn thing going but I'm doing it the oil leaks caused by the PCV valve which is really hard to get to it's somewhere buried up under here you just remove this motor mount 14s and there's a bracket there's three bolts and there's brackets in the way so you just take that out it's no big deal access to it okay I'm just trying to fucking get these two bolts loose along the motor for the motor mount damn idler pulley better be worn out to hell because this this sucks look at that that's how much room I have to work with here's a little something custom for you pieces of a tire motor mount inserts I got tired of doing these things, I had to do them like three times, especially this rear one. They're so small. Like, this back one holds the torque of the whole motor. And it kept on getting fucked up just from hitting bumps because it's so, it needs to be twice as wide like the Maxima. So what I did is I shoved pieces of a tire in it and it's been good ever since. $12 part, but man, I was stripping out the bolts that goes into this frame and stuff. And not fun. Okay, I did jack up the motor. And it's... Oh, wow, look at that. I don't know how far I can go with it, but it's probably about as far as I want to go. Looks like I have access to it. Yeah, I cracked the nut on it. It wasn't on too tight. A lot of this stuff wasn't too tight, like this motor mount. The bolt's pretty loose, easy to crack. But those bolts I've never had out before down there. I just took out the ones that were on the cross member, not the ones on the transmission. So they're a little tight. Remember your anti seize. Very important. Remove tension off the alternator thing is the thread stripped out right there so I just put a nut and bolt right there to singe it up after it's tight so yeah I mean I'm making progress here maybe I, I gotta maybe undo this right here so I can move this line over I'm so close to having it off very close yep <laughs> I knew this job is gonna be a pain in the ass but man this pulley felt loose even before I undid the nut that holds it on it felt pretty wobbly 185,000 miles I'm driving this fucker to the moon yeah this job is definitely not for beginners you have to do weird stuff like make an extension out of two wrenches and stuff to get to bolts that you can't get to with sockets and extensions as far as four cylinders go this has got to be one of the most cramped engine bays ever especially the intake side I've had the intake manifold du gasket done once, around 100,000 miles, and I had it taken somewhere. I wasn't going to deal with that. Look at that shit. Well, look at this shit. <laughs> no soy es primo. Alright, let's get the fucking work here, god damn it. Okay. Got the old pulley off. Oh! 
Anyways, um, this, see how you can push it in and it turns like that? Well, there's only one way. It's it's square. It's rounded at the top and on the sides. It's like a rectangle. It only goes in. You got to pull it forward, so it doesn't. It's got to be in a, the right spot there. Like when you pull it out and twist, it pops into place. But it has to be pulled out. It's got to be in that notched position. And uh, <sighs> this is so difficult. Right here, the space you got. And I'm about to drop this thing. Oh, I'm too greasy. I can't reach it. Oh, shit. Did it drop? Okay, the new one is semi on. I got it threaded. But since it's keyed, when it goes into the motor, it has to be in that position. So I'm going to have to feel, tighten it up a little bit, but not too tight, and feel exactly where that the key is the key position which means it only goes in one way to keep it from spinning inside the motor okay all right I got the new one on that was actually uh, not as hard as I thought it was gonna be it is kinda tricky you wanna slowly put tension on it and get it started and make sure it's pulled out all the way and wiggle it around and make sure it's in that keyed zone where this can't move back and forth You'll, you'll be able to feel it when it's in because what will happen is if you start tightening that in it's not in the whole thing will just spin but if you pull it back as you're tightening it just a little bit at a time you can get it in that keyed zone and then you can tighten it up all the way yep crap you gotta do it at 185,000 miles maybe next time I can find the PCV valve and maybe fix this oil leak I really need I, I've already done this valve cover gasket once but I need to do it again because I didn't use RTV like an idiot but hey, that's the stuff you learn when you work on your own car. Hopefully this video will help somebody else do their ultimate too instead of saying fuck it, which I'm sure a lot of people have. Yeah, one thing about this is when you do this, it puts a lot of pressure on your transmission mount. I just did this not too long ago, so it's new, it can take it, but if you do this with, old, with an old transmission motor mount, it might just crack it. But the transmission mounts never go out in these things. It's always the front and rears. And they're only 12 bucks a piece, but man, they suck. All right, what the fucking undo this jack? Let's see how much this motor moves. Oh shit! Oh, oh. <laughs> that is unsettling looking. But I'm going to need to jack it back up to line those bolts up, and then these this motor mount bolts should line up fine after you get those in. Then after that, just put this bracket back on I had to take it off to get to this third bolt down there but other than that just put everything back and it's good I wasn't looking forward to this job now it's almost done all right I got that one done let's see if we can cram this fucker in here somehow oh wow look at that one fucking hand one hand Oh, huh, when you know it, upside down. There's a 50 50 chance. I always get tails. Oh my god. It's the Oklahoma Panther. Now just tighten up this little power steering line holder right here. It's a good thing they're not all metal because at least you can undo a mount and they're movable because of the rubber hoses. Yeah, when you put this new motor mount back in, what you do is you go ahead and put the bolt that goes through it in and then you pry there's a little spot to pry down, down there a little circle hole in the little pry spot down there pry it forward 
and you can match these up. So yeah, and then you just tighten up your alternator. As you can see, I have a custom Harbor Freight bolt going through here because the thread stripped out right here. It was just a bolt where there's threads in here, so I gotta come up with my own thing. It's working good so far. You know, this job is not for amateurs. More of this old ass car to come. How to fix your old ass, busted ass car.